Welcome back. K cases of liver cancer and deaths are on the rise. According to one study, liver cancer increased by 75% worldwide between 1990 and 2015. It is up 57% among blacks, 69% among Hispanics, and get this, it is up 82% among whites. What is going on? Joining us for more are Dr. A.J. Patel from Florida Cancer Specialists and Drs. Justin Lee and Ken Meredith from Sarasota Memorial Hospital. Gentlemen, uh, welcome to you all. Let me uh, read you a quote from uh, Cancer Today that is really kind of startling, and I think we could put this up on the screen. What is disconcerting is that liver cancer is now the fastest increasing cause of cancer death in the U.S. Incidence rates began rising in the mid-1970s, and they are expected to go up until through at least 2030, liver cancer is the only cancer in the United States with incident rates that continue to rise every year in men and women. And the question, Ken, is why? Well, I think it's multifactorial. I think um, there's a lot of baby boomers that had exposure to hepatitis, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, and that has caused us to have an increase rate and you have to realize that in our country you know hepatitis and uh, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease both can contribute when you think about hepatocellular carcinoma you really think of primary liver cancer you think about alcohol related but that's not always the case and that's the difficult thing for people who may not be aware to realize is that there are other factors involved in causing these cancers. This is one of the most common cancers actually worldwide. Over 600,000 deaths related worldwide from but hepatocellular just, cancer. Justin, I, I want to pick up on that for a moment because you saw the doctor in our story there saying that diet can really have everything to do with, with uh, the chances of, of you getting this kind of, of disease. Most people think that you know, you know heavy you know drinkers of alcohol have an increased you know chance of getting liver cancer, but diet plays an incredible role. Well, I think in America, diet plays a role um, as opposed to worldwide, as Ken referred to, mostly because our diets are you know they're good, <laughs> they're enriched. They've got we've got a lot of sugar in our diet. We have a lot of calories, and what Ken's talking about is fatty deposition within the liver, meaning that. You may not outwardly look obese, but you're depositing fat within your liver, which probably is a inflammatory state that leads us to developing these cancers. I would just add, I think one of the reasons that the incidence is rising is not just related to diet, but it's probably related to detection. So we right now have pretty good programs for mammography for breast cancer. We have pretty good programs for following PSAs, digital rectal exams for prostate cancer. We have lung screening that, that, that is done for lung cancer. But there really isn't a good screening tool for liver cancer. So it requires fairly complex imaging. It re requires um, your primary care physician to think about it, to understand that potentially you may have say an increase in your liver enzymes and then to take it that extra step to look for you know a, a, an elevated alpha fetal protein level and then say okay let's get an image so one of the problems is that we see a lot of these patients and they're already late stage because they had no symptoms right and dr patel i guess what a lot of viewers i bet are, are looking to hear about is that we have always heard that liver cancer is incredibly difficult to treat and if not cure I know what the statistics say here, but are we making any progress to increase long longevity? I think we are. I think the progress has been slow, but I think that one of the big developments has been that we are approaching it with more than one discipline. We have Ken, who's a surgeon. We have Justin, who's an, a radiologist who does interventional procedures. And all of us, like myself, who do chemotherapy and other systemic treatments, work together to try to identify cancers early, but also to work from a multimodality approach as a team to try to get people the best care that they that they need. So, are we seeing any evidence that um, that it's increasing life expectancy? I think um, with in surgical innovation and um, more often, we're referring patients for transplant as well. Um, there's very good data to support that certain candidates, particularly under the age of 70, actually have substantial improvement in survival if you're caught at an early stage with the liver transplant. Other patients that don't have particular um, significant liver disease, our ability to resect or take these things out and our ability to perform liver surgery has improved substantially in the last even 10 years. Okay, we have to take a quick break. We'll be back talking about the alarming increase in liver cancer. Stay with us. 
Welcome back. We are talking about the alarming increase in liver cancer and joining us for more are Dr. A.J. Patel from Florida Cancer Specialist and Drs. Justin Lee and Ken Meredith from Sarasota Memorial Hospital. And Ken, we were talking about the, the cause of liver cancer, not only in the U.S. but around the world, and um, the answers are, are a little bit different. You were saying during the break, for instance, in China and other parts of the world, it's because parents there are not, you know, getting, getting shots for their kids the same way that we do here. Well, um, it's not necessarily getting vaccinations, and I think Justin alluded to earlier, you know, in the healthcare industry, we're all mandatory required to get hepatitis vaccinations, and it's more of being, you know, having those things available in countries like, or in, a, in the continent of Africa and, and, and countries like China. But, you know, it's interesting that their death rates have decreased, and, and because they have such a widespread incidence for hepatocellular carcinoma, they have very very rigid screening protocols because they know that a very large percent of their population are going to get diagnosed with these cancers so they get scanned and MRI and alpha fetal protein blood tests checked at very early ages to try to get them at early stages so they can be surgical candidates. If you look at how much surgery is performed for, for a pedocerial carcinoma in those countries, it's the number one, one of the top operations that they what do. What about the issue that I think you discussed in, uh, in our story that, that the, the children of the 60s are growing older and uh, in some ways are, are you basically saying the chickens are coming home to roost, uh, that there was you know, a lot of people developed hepatitis because of their, you know, what they did in their younger days, and, and they're paying the price for it right now. Sure. Some might have also been exposed to products, uh, uh, blood products, blood transfusions during the 80s and 90s when screening wasn't really available in terms of um, prior to giving a blood transfusion, some products might have been exposed. Um, some people might be carriers of hepatitis C, and it might be a chronic infection, one that doesn't cause any symptoms or any real... Um, lab test abnormalities or uh, uh, significant findings, so they would be the ones that have liver damage slowly develop over time and be a setup for cirrhosis and particularly. So Justin, if there was one piece of advice you would like to give people, what would that be? Well, that's a tough question because um, I think as it pertains to liver cancer, if you ever had uh, some of the risk factors, and that would be ever having used IV drugs um, ever having contracted hepatitis C or hepatitis B, uh, you probably would know if you had B, but C can actually be, can be treated. Um, I think I would urge that your primary care doctor dig a little deeper to make sure that a small lesion can be found and that can be easily treated with surgery um, and that it doesn't become a larger lesion. I think it, overall, just being healthier, you know, I mean, like Ken was alluding to, unfortunately, we've got diabetes and obesity is probably major risk factors for all cancers, um, making sure that, you know, you practice a healthy lifestyle would probably be, you know, the only thing that you can really do. But then also being the consumer of your own health, you know, going and saying, look, you know, I might have done this when I was in my 20s and I think I need to get a scan or I think I need to, you to get a lab test to check to see whether or not I possibly have liver cancer. Right, we have to leave it there. We want to thank our guests, Dr. A.J. Patel from Florida Cancer Specialist and Drs. Justin Lee and Ken Meredith from Sarasota Memorial Hospital.